Mistborn as a Western. It actually works. There's something incredibly satisfying with returning to a fictional world that you've become so familiar with, even if you are returning to it 300 years in the future, and it's not exactly the same world it used to be. That's the case with The Alloy of Law by Brandon Sanderson. This is sort of like a continuation of the original Mistborn trilogy, so it is the fourth Mistborn book, but it's also the first book in a brand new era of Mistborn called the Wax and Wayne series. So this book is separate with an all new cast of characters, but like I mentioned, it takes place 300 years after the events of the Hero of Ages. So I highly, highly recommend reading the original Mistborn trilogy before reading this one because because the events and people in the original trilogy are now myths and legends in this series. Not to mention you're going to want to tune into all of the hidden easter eggs in this series. There is a lot of them, and they're really satisfying to find. In case you're unaware, Mistborn is a fantasy series that plans on having four or five different eras. They all take place on the same planet of Scadrial, but they span different time frames. So for instance, in the first Mistborn series, it was kind of more like a classic fantasy setting. It was still very, very unique, uh, but now in this series, it's more like Western meets steampunk, which is as awesome as it sounds. Something to note, the Wax and Wayne series actually weren't meant to be the second era of Mistborn. Uh, what originally was the second era is now being bumped up to the third era, but the Wax and Wayne series started off as a series of short stories. All right, so time to stop rambling and get into the review. This isn't the same ash-covered world that it used to be. An overhaul from Harmony and 300 years of progression has done a lot to change Scadrial. There is now steam power, electric lighting, steel skyscrapers, and railroad tracks running across the country. This is a reborn world. Allomancy and Ferrochemy still play a big role in society, some people having the ability to use both, and they're called Twinborn. Both of our protagonists, Waxilium Ladrian and his friend Wayne, are both Twinborn. Now, Wax is a lawman who spent a good amount of time in the roughs, the Roughs is basically what you imagine when you think of the Wild West. It's that untamed land a little bit outside of civilization. In this book, civilization mostly consists in the hub city of Elendel. Yes, Elendel. That might sound familiar to some of you. There's a bit more lawlessness in the Roughs, which is why the lawmen go there to bring the law to the criminals and protect the people. This is where the story starts, and there's a bit of a tragic beginning, but after that, Wax ends up returning to Elendel after his uncle dies, and he assumes his role and duties as Lord of House Ladrian. His house has kind of fallen on hard times, which is why Wax needs to find an arranged marriage to a wealthy woman to kind of pull him back up into the social game. But moving back into the city after living in the roughs is a drastically different lifestyle, and we see Wax uh, kind of having a hard time adjusting to this. He keeps his guns on him at all times, and he seems to be looking for a little bit of trouble so that he can put his lawman skills to the use. And trouble finds him when Wayne shows up at his mansion, and they begin investigating a series of robberies committed by a group of thieves known as the Vanishers. They're known for their bizarre theatrics, such as using a phantom train to commit many of their robberies. That's about as far as I'll go with the plot, but basically, Wax is discovering that the city is just as dangerous as the roughs. Moving on to the characters, what I liked and didn't like, starting with Wax. He's that classic cowboy gunslinging hero who's a little bit rough around the edges. He even drinks his elementic medals with a bit of whiskey, and I thought that was so perfect for his character. As for his twinborn abilities, he has a pretty unique set of powers. Wax is known as a Crasher, which is a combination of a coin shot and a skimmer. So his allomantic ability allows him to push off of metals, while his ferrochemical ability allows him to adjust his weight, making himself become lighter or heavier at will. Wayne, on the other hand, is a Bloodmaker. His ferrochemical ability allows him to store up health so that he can then heal himself later. And his allomantic ability lets him put up a speed bubble, speeding up time for anybody that's inside of it. Now this is something we've never seen 
in Mistborn before, and it's really awesome. He can put up a speed bubble to quickly get changed into a disguise, or to have a private conversation with somebody, uh, then withdraw the speed bubble, and everybody else wouldn't really have a clue of what just happened. Wayne acts as the comic relief sidekick, and he does this job really well. Wayne is definitely my favorite character. He had some hilarious dialogue, and I just like all the quirks that he has. Like, he is a master of disguise. He's also a master at changing his accents, which complements his disguising ability, and he also has a tendency to trade with people. His version of trading being taking an expensive gun from somebody and replacing it with a used scarf. I just really liked his character. I thought his accents were really fun to read, and I loved all the dialogue between him and Wax. There's also a third character, which I won't mention her name, as it's kind of revealed a little bit later on, um, but she is the main female protagonist, and I found that the female characters in this book were kind of weak, they didn't have a whole lot of depth to them, but I have heard that the female characters become way more developed in the second and third book, so something that all three of these characters have in common is that they all fall into a stereotype. Now, I do think the stereotypes are done quite well for the most part, um, but I am hoping to get some more character development in the next books in the series. As far as the mood in this book, it's definitely a lot more light-hearted than the original trilogy. It's also not as complex and as deep as the original trilogy, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think this is just made to be a fun spin-off book, and it definitely accomplishes that. The main thing I noticed is that the scales were much higher in the original Mistborn trilogy. We were, like, afraid for the entire planet in that book. In this series, the scales are much lower, and I don't really think that's a bad thing. So yeah, overall, I had a lot of fun reading this book. It was more fun than I was expecting. I do feel like some of the characters were a little bit shallow in this book, and I think that does have to do with it starting as a short story. I just think there's a tremendous amount of potential with this world that Sanderson has created, and I love how he's exploring that. It's not that often you see authors make spin-off series like this. If you know any other series like this, make sure to comment down below. Uh, I think, like, the Dune books kind of span different time frames. I don't really know because I haven't read those. I also have to say that I read The Alloy of Law as I was reading The Way of Kings, which was a little bit difficult because I was really, really enjoying The Way of Kings. It was a little bit difficult to enjoy The Alloy of Law since The Way of Kings just completely blew me away. If you're a Mistborn fan and you haven't read The Stormlight Archive yet, I definitely recommend reading it. I'm now on the second book, Words of Radiance, and it's just... I'll be making a lot of Stormlight Archive videos pretty soon. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, I appreciate it so much, and I will see you in a future video.